Lord again, everyone. Amen. Truly, we are grateful to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. We're excited that the Lord has granted us and given unto us, amen, another opportunity to come and to serve him on tonight. Amen. This is our Bible study. Amen. And we are grateful, amen, that we are kicking off our uh, missionary services that will be every third Wednesday, amen, of each month. And we are excited, amen, to uh, sharing with uh, missionaries, amen, to instruct us and to teach us the things of God, amen. It is important that we have missionaries, amen, women of God, those that will uh, undergird Amen. The church uh, in righteous teaching, amen, to give us instructions, amen, to serve, amen, what it takes to serve the Lord, amen, amen. And we're not just, um, just doing things within the four walls, amen. We believe in going outside the doors, working for the Lord, amen, amen. And we're just so grateful. But what we're going to do at this moment, amen, we're just going to share, amen, in prayer, uh, scripture reading, amen, and um, the missionaries will go with what they have planned for tonight, amen. Let us, amen. Uh, our Facebook Live and on our YouTube channel, we say God bless you. We welcome you to Dimensions of Light, the Way of the Cross Church, 14 Livingston Street, here in the city of Newark, New Jersey. We, amen, welcome you to our virtual uh, sanctuary and also to those that are in-house, amen. We welcome you into the presence of the Lord, amen. I believe tonight, Amen. God is going to speak unto us. I am anticipating, amen, a word from the Lord. Amen. And so we're going to begin to pray one thing that we can never get away from, amen, or should never get away from, and that is prayer. Amen. Prayer is an avenue to the ears of God, to the heart of God. Amen. And when we come together touching and agreeing and believing God, amen, for the self-same thing, I believe he will answer, amen, because he said in his word, where there's any two or three gathered together in his name, touching and agreeing that he would be in the midst, amen. And so, amen. And, and that's it. Even though he may have a crowd of people, but if there's two or three Amen. In the midst that is just saying, Lord, we, we agree on the self same thing. He's going to move. And I believe tonight as we pray, the Lord is going to move. Father is in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we say thank you. We honor you. We glorify your precious name. God, we give unto you, God, that which is due unto your name. Father, we thank you for another chance, another opportunity to come together to say thank you, God. Oh, Father, we glorify you on tonight, God, and we thank you for all things, God. You are an amazing God. You are an awesome God. There is none like you, God. We can't liken anything like you, God. You're omnipresent. You're omnipotent, God. Oh, God, omnipotent, God. You know it all, God. You got all powers. You are the provider, God. You are the way maker, God. Jehovah Rapha, you are the one that healeth thee, God. Oh, you are Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Tiskin you. Hallelujah, God. Jehovah Shalom. We say thank you tonight. In the name of Jesus, God, as we go into this service tonight, God. God, as we come before your presence, God. Oh, God, we bow down heads and hands lifted up to you, God. We reverence you, God. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. We give your name all the praise that you went to it. And oh God, we pray tonight, God. Yeah, hey God, as we are clapping our hands and as we are lifting up our voices, God. 
that you would move on our behalf, God. Touch now, God, and we'll give your name to praise, God. We rebuke the devout of the enemy, God, and all that the devil would try to do, God, all that he had plot to do, God. Oh, we plead the blood of Jesus against you. You is a liar. We are victorious people, and we give God praise. We honor the name of the Lord, for the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run therein. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that at the name of Jesus, you get all the glory, God. And we say thank you, God, for this power in that name. God, this power in that blood wash name, that redemptive name, that name that saves, that name that delivers, that name that sets free. We thank you for the name, God. For you said in your word, whatsoever we do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. So we baptize in your name. We pray in your name. We shout in the name. We lift up the name. We glorify the name. Hallelujah. God will ring it out, God, in this house. We'll ring it out, God, in our house. We'll ring the name out, God, in the courthouse. We'll ring the name out in the hospital room. We'll ring the name out, God, in the doctor's office, God. We'll ring the name out, God, wherever we go, God, because there's power in your name, God. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for that name that's above every name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So touch tonight, God. Give us the victory tonight, God. We'll say, thank you, Jesus. Hey, glory, 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 glory. We honor you. We celebrate you. We glorify you, God. Meet the needs of your people tonight, God. Open up our understanding, God, to the scriptures. God, on tonight, God, our heart is ready, our spirit is ready to receive what you have in store for us. Touch these missionaries, God, that's doing a work for you, God. Touch their lives. Oh, God, bless them financially. Give them great spiritual insight. We thank you for the president, the vice president, the treasurer, God, the secretary, God. We thank you for them all, God, that serve in that capacity. And Father, we pray that you anoint them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. God, as they do the work for you, thank you, Jesus, that you would lead them. Father, we want you to be glorified. We want you to be honored. This is our prayer tonight. And it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We say amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Let us thank God for all things. Our scripture reading, amen, will be coming from the book, amen, of Hebrews, chapter number 12, the book of Hebrews chapter number 12 we're just so grateful to be back in the house of the Lord amen we're just so grateful we just honor the Lord amen with all things amen in the book of Hebrews chapter number 12 reads that this wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God for considered him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and fainted in your mind. 
we thank God for the reading of the word. Amen. Thus we have read the book of Hebrews chapter verse chapter 12 verses 1 through 3. God bless you. Amen. And we thank God for the word. Amen. Of God. At this time we're going to turn it over. Amen. Into the hands of Amen. Our missionary Amen. Uh, Tammy Harris, she's going to carry us further into the things of God. Amen. Let us draw our attention. I'm asking everyone as on Facebook Live and YouTube to share, amen, uh, this live. In Jesus' name, amen. to God who's ahead of my life. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. <sighs> Give honor to the pastor and first lady, Paige, Elder Bowden, my husband, Gregory Harris, my girls, to me and Tamisha, and all the family and friends that's here today and on social media. Thank you. Okay, I'll be coming from 1 Samuel chapter 25. Now, it's a beautiful story and it emerges hmm, of one one of the submission and deliverance Abigail was not one of the major product um, players in the history of of Israel but as the story shows she has a natural skill of peacemaking she was she's a humble woman of and she's beautiful and she has brains. Whoa. Abigail could diffuse the situations between two high headed men. She knew her husband was a fool, and his intent character betrays him to be one. He was rude, drunk, and stupid. When her husband mistreated David, Abigail rushed to take critical action. She saved the day for her people as well as for David. Because David had lost his temper and he was bent on revenge. And he probably would have regretted that. A man of passion, David could lose his temper, but he also could have courage to back down when challenged with good sense. He thanked Abigail warmly and he made a mental note about this remarkable woman when her husband died shortly. Later, later, David asked Abigail to be his wife. Without hesitation and without tears of mourning, Abigail agreed. Let's talk about this, Abigail. Let's talk about her. Okay. We need, as Christians, we need to take quick actions. Abigail's story reminds of us of an important importance of acting swiftly. David had sent 10 young men and told them to go to Caramel and ask Nabal, that's um, Abigail's husband, and greet him in my name and tell them peace be with you and your house and all long life to you. And ask Ab Nabal to provide for us, his servants and his son, and your son David with, with whatever you can spare. When David, young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all that David had said and they waited for an answer. But Nabal answered David's servants and said, who is this David and who's the son of Jesse? Shall I take my bread, my water and my meat that I kill for my shares and give them to, I don't know you, I don't know you. So David's young men turned around and they went and they told David all that was said. Now one of Ab Abigail's servants overheard this conflict and rushed and told Abigail what was said. He said, David sent his men out of the wilderness and to salute our master and he, he railed on them. 
But when the men were very good to David, I mean, to Nabal and his shepherds. Now they didn't hurt them and they didn't uh, mess with anything. They didn't kill them because they could have done that also. They were like a, a wall upon us. And by night they was good to us and they kept them safe and secure. Now remember, David, first love, was a shepherd. He was known as a shepherd. He knows the, da the dangers. Remember that he also fought off a lion and a bear in 1 Samuel 17 and 34. But instead of procrastinating, Abigail chose to take immediately, immediate action. Abigail quickly, her quick, decisive decision making saved, saved her from um, a potential devastating si situation. Let me read that again. Her quick decision making made this pro made her wait. Okay, Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves of bread, two hundred I mean two hundred loaves of sheep, no, oh, five sheep. Okay, two bottles of wine, five sheep, ready dressed, five measures of dry coin. 100 cl clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on a the donkey. Now, had she hesitated, things could have went south quickly when they ran into David and his men. Luckily, for her wise thinking, helped prevent disaster. Abigail had, was no stranger to swift decision. In verse 24, she, when she noticed David approaching, Abigail wasted no time. She hopped off her donkey and bowed her head in reverence. Now, Abigail moved towards danger, knowing that God was indeed with her. Abigail taught us a valuable lesson. Procrastination is the enemy of progress. Don't hesitate or take, don't hesitate to take action. Sometimes quick actions can make all the difference between life and death or a missed opportunity or, and success. Now as Christians, we must be humble. Abigail ta teaches us that even if it's not your fault, sometimes humbly, being humble is the best course of action. When Abigail fell, to, fell at David's feet and said, upon me, Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be. Upon let thy handmaids, I pray thee, speak in thy audience and hear the words of thy handmaid. Let not my Lord, I pray, regard this man, this worthless fool, Nabal, and his name, his name is Folly, and Folly was with him. But thy handmaid saw not the young men. Now she's telling David that she didn't see the young men that he sent her. He sent to, to ask for these things or she would have did it. Now, she walked fearless to meet David with a bowed head and humbly asked his pardon on behalf of Nabal, despite having done nothing wrong. Abigail powerful, powerfully showed her humility by humbling herself before David and asking him to forgive her husband. Reaction went to David's request. Her genuine plea demonstrate respect and willingness to bring peace between them. Abigail's humbly, her humbleness um, turned David's heart. He has saw the errors that he was about to make. Now him, him himself, David himself, had just spared Saul's life. Now Saul was out to kill David. Yet David has been quick to examine the household of a man that had merely just insulted him. Now Nabal didn't try to kill him. Nabal just insulted him. You know, that pride thing. You know, we gotta get that under control. Now his the life that he his life was in exile, and that would made David angry. Now his anger was nearly driven him to seek revenge against the man who really wasn't an enemy. Even though it wasn't Abigail's fault, she diffused the intense, intense situation with a power, with powerful 
humility. Had Abigail gone for a more aggressive approach towards resolving this bad blood between them, countless innocent lives may have been at risk. Abigail bravely stepped towards the, and take the blame for something that she didn't do, humbly asked forgiveness on behalf of her whole family. Now at that moment, God spoke clearly and showed David how wrong he was to seek revenge. In Deuteronomy 32 and 35, it says, I will, I will get revenge and pay them back at the time their foot slips. Now this is the Lord telling David that, hey, the revenge is mine. I'm the one that uh, I can take the revenge. But likewise, the problem may not be your fault. It might not, but you might have to be, humble yourself to solve it. Have the attitude, have an attitude that the person that started the issue or have the issue should just come forward and take the blame on. Sometimes screaming, a screaming match may not be the good answer, the best answer. It just might cause a sore throat and headaches. Let's humble ourselves. Jesus took on the cross, and it wasn't his fault. Just imagine if he said, it ain't my fault, I ain't doing that. Hey, where will we be? He humbled himself for us, and he stayed on the cross. Now, we need to look at the big picture as Christians. Abigail was a wise woman who truly believed in profound impact of her decisions. However, she saw the, at, at this moment, she saw that God had a plan for David's life. So she had to remind David <clears throat> that he's part of something bigger. And even God himself fought again, alongside of David. Abigail was familiar with the incredible stories of David's escape from Paul of Saul and the victory over Gala, I mean, Goliath, <laughs> Goliath, sorry, by using a mere sling and stone. All the evidence of God fighting with him. This knowledge inspired her to encourage David at the same time, the, and at the time, a powerful divine protection that he had will continually be over his life if he do not do this. She knew that both of them loved their heavenly fathers and he would fight for us, for them. I want to remind you that you are part of something bigger. God has something in store for your life. A true warrior, <clears throat> a true warrior is loyal, faithful, and selfless. Abigail's encourage courageous defending her home and her family from danger, danger, never wavering in loyalty to God or those she loved. She showed great respect for David when it was easy for her, her to just give up. She reminded him of the blessings that awaited if he stayed true. Abigail was an incredible, wise, and discerning woman. In her plea to David, she gracefully asked for one thing in return. Should the Lord grant, her, grant him success, that he would remember her as a faithful servant who acted out for love one, for the ones that's under her care. Clearly, if she gained favor, it means, it means safety for everyone that depended on her. Now, David heeded Abigail's wise words, and she, he respected her for the great respect she showed towards her husband's household, despite his faulty character, because Nabal was a fool. David sent, away, sent her away with blessings and promises and a safe home. We need to be knowledgeable. Abigail's in, excuse me, Abigail, she was both wise and beautiful. Knowledge can be a powerful weapon, and Abigail certainly used it when approaching David with courage and ease. Abigail was keen aware of her husband and his significantly underestimating David's power. Unlike his arrogant question, who is this David, 
And who's the son of Jesse? Abigail immediately recognized David. She used this knowledge to help facilitate the conversation and ultimate persuade David. Abigail re realized something important. Knowledge is power. When it comes to dealing with issues, knowing more gives us the advantage by giving us opportunities and allowing us to better prepare for what life throws at us. Now, if Nabal had the wisdom of Abigail and his refusal to assist David's messengers would have ended a little better than what it did. But instead, he lacked the understanding and which led him down a dangerous path. Now, we also, as Christians, need to be approachable. Being approachable isn't about being friendly and welcome. It's also about having an open mind. It's about listening to the prospects of others, even if you don't want to hear what they have to say. But ultimately, embracing that advice can help you in many ways. Abigail was the type of person who inspired comfort and trust, so much that even the servants feel comfortable approaching her and telling her about the dangers and the disaster that's coming their way. In contrast, Nabal's rep reputation preceded him. He was a notorious for his wickedness that no one dared to speak up around him. Can you imagine just being around somebody that you can't talk to? My God. Abigail's in, incredible accessible ended, ended up saving all her family. Nabal was the only one with the chance to make things right, but any servants that knew him knew they, they were just too afraid to even tell him, um, you know, that guy you just, you know, talked about, he can kill us. He can kill you. You know, he just got that. You know, he's the, he's the new king. He's the the future king. Now, Abigail showed us that when we make ourselves approachable, others can quickly come and provide crucial information. Not only does this create strong relationship, it also opens doors to life-saving opportunities. We must use discernment. Abigail was a wise woman who knew the importance of discerning. When she met David without her husband Nabal's knowledge. Now, David could have killed her instantly. You know, he just had that effect, or he could have just did that. And Nabal would have never known what happened to her because, again, he wasn't there. With great care, she had made it clear that being that Nabal was to be safe, was clear that his safety and well-being was important. Listening and carefully to God's guidance, despite any personal risk-taking, what a powerful example of trusting our Father above all else. So she, re, re, she re, relied on God to give her the wisdom and give her the understanding and protect her as she goes to to meet David. Now Abigail's wisdom avoided an all, all out war or battle between David and her husband. Now Nabal made terrible mistakes by not showing David any kindness, but thankfully Abigail stepped out, stepped up and managed the situation with discernment and avoid disaster for both of them. In taking up Nabal's cause and asking David to spare his life, Abigail pro proved her, proves herself to be a righteous and caring woman. At great risk to herself, she approaches David, an angry man bent on revenge. She intercedes for her husband despite his bad behavior. 
women should always cover their husband and ask God for wisdom, for their wisdom. Her request was, I mean, it can't be a picture of Christ who offered himself as a sacrifice to save foolish sinners from the consequences of their own actions and continue, he continued to intercede for us. Now God will fight your battle. God was Abigail's champion and even to this day, he remains steadfast in his fight for us. Yet she didn't have a face, even though she didn't have to face the biggest challenge alone, God blessed her with a special favor that made an impression on King David himself. Now God walked, worked through Abigail, helping her to spare the lives of everyone in her household. Knowing Nabal was drunk, she didn't tell him everything, she didn't tell him the whole story until daybreak. <clears throat> but it came to pass in the morning when the wine was out of Nabal. Now before the wine was out, when she went to Nabal, she had, Nabal was having a party in his house. It was like a feast for a king. Now Nabal's heart was very merry and he was drunk. He was very drunk. Yes, he was tore up. <laughs> Whereas he, she didn't tell him anything until the morning. And when it came to pass in the morning and the, and the wine was gone out of Nabal, that his wife told him these things, he realized how, how much danger he was in. His heart died within him and he became like stone. A condition today we might think that, we might describe it as a heart attack or a stroke but he was scared, scared to death. That's what you can call it. Now, Abigail faced a difficult situation. Now, it came to pass that 10 days after that, that his heart, heart died, the Lord smoked him, and Nabal died. Now, Abigail faced a difficult situation with grace and intelligence. So it's no wonder that God showed her the favor she deserved. Not only did he protect Abigail from Nabal's wrath in an, in, in an incredible way, because being drunk and knowing that you could have just left your, um, lost your life that time, that time, and he was an abuser, therefore he could have just, you know, hurt her. So God protected her from that. But when David heard about what had happened, he, had, he was moved, and he asked her hand in marriage. Now, God hasn't just taken care of her. He also provided for everyone in, around her. God provides and God provides, no, God proves himself faithful and mighty in Abigail's situation. From her humble, brave decision to intervene, he provides guidance protecting David from the battles he shouldn't have had took. In Romans 12 and 19, it says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay it, says the Lord. Yes. Now, we need to show respect to our leaders and to the people that is above us. Now, Abigail respected her husband. She was a devoted and humble wife. Even though she, didn't, she, did not, even though she disagreed with her husband's foolishness, after coming into contact with David and taking specific actions on her own account, Abigail made sure that David was aware of what was happening because he was the head of the household, even though he was a fool. The world teaches us, the, the world's teaching can easily sway us to get revenge and stand up for ourselves in an, in an aggressive way. However, Abigail showed us that it is still possible to maintain our inner strength and composure against injustice. 
Abigail is a prime example of how God can wave, a, wave circumstances and give us courage to stand up to them instead of living under compression, oppression like no, na, Nabal. Now, Abigail was a woman of great strength and wisdom. She showed tremendous courage in the face of danger, exhibited compassion and kindness in adversity. But her story echoes in the hearts of all the women. For example, of true courage and, and wisdom, even in the face of danger. Abigail is truly one of the unsung heroes of the Bible. Now, David and Nabal can be seen as a representative of two responses, men having, two responses, men having to Christ. Now, Nabal does not repent or acknowledge his son. Neither does he thank Abigail for her willingness to risk her own life on his behalf. Now, on the other hand, David's heart was tender and repentance, and he called Abigail blessed for her actions. David is spared. David spares the consequences of his sins that he had planned, but Nabal, Nabal dies in his sin. And in the end, Nabal's wealth, his wife, and his very life was taken from him. Abigail is a savior of beauty, wisdom, and discernment. Let's enter into the, and, and, and she entered into a loving relationship with, da, with David. And Abigail's, we have a small picture of the ultimate savior, Jesus. He's the source of beauty and wisdom who desires a loving relationship with us forever. Thank you. And God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Let's give God a praise for that wonderful lesson on Abigail. Move this up, Lil. Amen. Hallelujah. I am so proud of Missionary Harrison. I'm not just saying that because she's my wife, but she did an awesome job on tonight teaching us, amen, about Abigail, letting us know that we can learn a lot from a woman such as Abigail, amen. She said she didn't delay, she didn't go slow about it, but she hurried and the Bible says she made haste. That means she was quick about it, amen. When she found out that David was on his way to take care of her husband, she says, oh no, I gotta do something. So she ran into the presence of David, not knowing what was going to happen. Amen? Not knowing what was going to happen, but knowing that she had to do something. Amen. She was a woman of decision. She was a woman, as Missionary Harris taught us, she was a woman of beauty. Amen. And she was a woman of faith. Amen. And she was also a perfect representation, as Missionary Harris said, a perfect representation of Christ because she was, on that day, she was an intercessor. Amen. She interceded because she saw what the outcome could have been. On the one side, there was David. Angry David with a sword in his hand. Amen. Ready to take care of somebody. And on the other side, there was foolish Nabal. Amen. David representing the wrath of God. And Nabal representing the foolishness and sinfulness of man. And who was in the middle? Hallelujah. Who was in the middle? Abigail. Saying, listen, we got to bring some kind of communion here. We got to bring some kind of agreement here. We got to defuse the situation representing Christ. Hallelujah. Between God and man. Amen. What a perfect intercessor. What a perfect, hallelujah, a perfect example of who Christ is. Amen. And I thank God. Amen. My mind goes back to a while back when... My wife and I, we dropped off our oldest daughter in Jersey City, and when we came back, you know, a car kind of cut us off. I was headed straight, you know, and a car just came out of their lane. They were supposed to stay in their lane, but they just came cry, cut right across to go to the gas station that was on the right and cut right across me, and they could have crashed right into me. Now, I'm going to be honest. At that moment, 
I wasn't feeling my most spiritual. The thoughts weren't, you know, as biblical as they should have been. Amen. And, you know, I was prompted to do stuff. I'll leave it at that. But thank God for my Abigail. She calmly touched my hand and said, it's all right. And right then and there, the presence of the Lord continued to rest, rule, and abide. And says, listen, your Abigail just took care of your situation. Your Abigail just stepped up. Your Abigail just proved that she's an intercessor. Amen. Because I could have pulled into that, that gas station and amen. But to God be the glory. Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. For the lesson about Abigail. We all need an Abigail in our lives. Amen. We all need somebody to step in. We all need somebody to step up. Amen. Because let's, let's be honest. Sometimes we don't make the best decisions. Sometimes we don't think the way we should think. Sometimes we don't do what we should do. Amen. But God, God always sends someone to say, listen now, listen now, it's time to do better. It's time to pick things up. It's time to make things better. Amen. And I love what Missionary Harris said about, you know, procrastination. She said procrastination is the enemy of progress. I love that. Procrastination is the enemy of progress. I mean, think about it. Just on tonight, if we would have procrastinated and said, you know what, I'm tired. You know, I'm just, I'm just going to lay here a little while longer. And then, you know, five minutes turned into ten minutes. Ten minutes turned to fifteen minutes. Before you know it, you look at the clock and say, oh, well, I might as well just stay on home. Amen. Procrastination is the enemy of progress. And if that would have happened, we could have missed out on such a great word on tonight. Hallelujah. How many times do we say, well, I'm not just going to, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to go. You know, I know, you know, it would be a good thing, but I'm just going to sit this one out. But God could be saying, this is your time. This is your time. When you go, amen, there's something meant specifically for you. There's a blessing for you. There's a miracle for you. There's a breakthrough for you. Are you going to let your, hallelujah, your complacency, your procrastination, and yeah, I'll say it, your laziness, get in the way of your blessing? Amen. I say no. I say, thank to God, let's go forth. Let's go forth in the spirit of Abigail and let's make haste. And let's do it and do it without delay. Amen. Because God is calling for us to do it and do it swiftly. Amen. What we're going to do, God is going to call us to do it as unto the Lord. And says, listen, we got a job to do, saints. We don't know who we're going to, inter you know, interact with. We don't know who we're going to encounter. Amen. But whatever we encounter, whoever we encounter, let God use you and let God speak to you. And let the spirit of Abigail take over and say, listen, <laughs> it's all right. You hold on, you hold on. Amen. And in the end, God worked it out, didn't he? God worked it out. Amen. Because in the end, God took care of the, you know, Nabal. And the word of God tells us that his name means folly, which the root word of folly is fool. And it's so perfect that we have our first missionaries Bible study in the month of April. April 1st is known as April Fool's. And Missionary Harris came and gave us a perfect Bible study about a fool named Nabal. Amen. But the mercy of God overrode that foolishness. And how many of us have ever committed foolish acts? How many of us has, have ever done things that are foolish? Things that we shouldn't have done. Things that we may regret. But see, here's the mercy and grace of God. Nabal was taken out of the picture, but guess what? We're still here. In spite of us. In spite of our folly. In spite of our foolishness. Amen. God says, listen, I'm going to allow you to still be here. I'm still going to bless you. I'm still going to deliver you. I'm still going to make a way. I'm still going to send your Abigail. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord. Amen. Again, we thank God for that wonderful lesson coming forth from missionary Tammy Harris. Amen. I would not have missed it for the world. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. The Lord is great. And I'm so glad to see our pastor and his family back. Pastor Page and the Pages are back, amen, back in the midst, amen. The Lord bless them, and I pray that they had an enjoyable time, amen. We're going to call forth our pastor that he may have the final remarks and the benediction, amen. Amen. God bless you. We thank the Lord for that great teaching tonight concerning Abigail, amen, a wonderful woman of God. So many great things you can learn. Amen. About her life. Amen. And 
what she represents, amen. Uh, the name represents like bringing joy, my father's joy, amen. Imagine having someone in your life like that, amen, that brings you joy. Look forward to come home too, amen. You look forward, amen, you know, to come home. And <laughs> <laughs> we thank the Lord <laughs> to God be the glory we just thank God amen I really enjoy amen the kickoff of this uh, missionary service tonight amen and I know we was in for a treat I knew it I had no doubt in my mind we was in for a treat amen and we're grateful we thank God for all the saints that have gathered tonight amen we celebrated the life of our uh, elect lady, amen. She had a birthday on yesterday, amen. And she's still going strong, and we thank God for her. And Brother Corey had a birthday on yesterday as well. Yeah, we're grateful, amen, for that. Who? Yes, and guess who else gave birth, amen, on yesterday? It wasn't me. <laughs> I'm like, who? Sister Denise, amen, uh, gave birth to a baby girl, amen, on yesterday. Amen. If you have her information, just contact her and congratulate her and her husband on their wonderful bundle of joy, amen. And so, just so grateful, man, life, amen, live life, amen, and uh um, I know it was said earlier, but that 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 uh, procrastination is the enemy of progression. Amen. Is when I I wrote that down. Amen. Because I can procrastinate at times, and 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 then at the last minute, I'm like, oh, I wish I would have did this <laughs> a week ago or a day ago or something, and and it does hinder. Amen. Uh, the progression of things because sometimes we rush at the last minute. Amen. But you studied the life of Abigail, man, and that was a wonderful woman of God. Amen. And I learned some more concerning her tonight. Amen. That I didn't know. <laughs> Amen. And we're grateful. But listen, on Saturday uh, will be um, our diocese meeting down in Philadelphia. Amen. With uh, District Elder Hubert Hines, Praise Temples, the host church. Amen. We're going to, amen, fellowship all day long, beginning at 930 with Christian education. 10 a.m. is missionaries. Uh, 11 a.m. is deacons. And we have our lunch, uh, choir rehearsal. Amen. Um, and then at 1 We'll have ministers and elders, uh, platform services, and then at two, we'll have you for Christ, and then at three, we'll have election, and then at four o'clock, we'll have our benedictorial service, and so the bus is leaving, amen, here, we have to leave no later than 7.30, amen, so we'll have some messages go out in the remind Amen. The rest of this week so that, amen, we can be there to celebrate the name of our Lord. We are excited, amen, for those who are participating from the dimensions of light in, in, the, service, in the services at the diocese. Thank you so very much, amen, and the sacrifice that everyone is making to go to be a part of this New England diet, New England Diocese of the Way of the Cross Churches. We're just so grateful for that. Remember, 7.30, Saturday morning, amen. So get your clothes out, amen, Friday night, amen. If you got to sleep in them, let's go ahead and sleep in them, amen, so that you, <laughs> amen, so that you can be on time, amen, to uh, celebrate the name of our Lord during our diocese meeting. And yes, we are grateful to be to be back, amen, um, here in Jersey. It was quite of a, um, a good trip, but yet it was challenging at times uh, because of the storm, amen, but we made the best of it, amen. It's good to have family, amen. I believe the Lord allow us to bond, amen, together. We laughed, we talked, and we discussed some things, and 
Sometimes it's good just to gather everybody in one room and just talk and see what's on everybody's mind and what's on everybody's heart. Hey Amen. What are, what are your future plans? What, what, what do you desire to do? And Hey Amen. Just have a good old time. Hey Amen. And just listening at these wonderful kids, uh, children. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. They told me the word kid is for goat. So we sort of say children. <laughs> so I'm learning. I'm, I'm learning even more now to say uh, uh, children instead of kids. <laughs> but um, it was just so grateful. And we're just so grateful that everything had went on. Hey man, thank God for our uh, assistant pastor, El Elder Harris, Lady Harris. Hey Amen. As they continue to lead the way. Hey Amen. We're just grateful um, that they went forth. Hey Amen. And and to the memorial service. Hey Amen. It. Uh, thank you. Hey Amen. We we were listening. Hey Amen. We were listening uh, to the services. And I, I just want to say this real quick. I I I. I love the um, virtual thing, I really do. But I'm gonna tell you something. There's nothing like being in the house of the Lord. I really want to say this to all those who are watching virtually. God bless you. I mean, we love you. We appreciate you. But while we was away, man, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. This seemed like it was just. I had to keep bringing my mind back, hey, amen. Because I, I I wanted to turn the TV on. <laughs> I wanted to go stand on the balcony at the hotel and like, no, nah, I got this. And, and I said, so I, I sat on myself down and said, sit down, amen, and and watch the uh, uh, the live and, and, and enjoy. And we thank God for the word, man. The word was impeccable. Thank God for what has been said. So at this time, we're going to lift our offering on tonight. Amen. Uh, missionary offering on tonight. I don't know if there's a certain amount that you guys, that you all would want tonight. Amen. But I, amen. Um, I think, amen. So they want to do $20 tonight. Amen. So we're going to, I'm going to do 25 Amen. Because we, I want to be blessed. Amen. And so the missionaries are asking for $20. Amen. On tonight. And we want to do that so that Whatever they desire to do, whatever they have in their minds and hearts to do, amen, for the body of Christ, we're going to do just that. Amen. You can give by uh, Cash App, if you would like, which is dollar sign New Dimension, W-O-T-C-C, -C, which is dollar sign N-E-W-D-I-M-E-N-S-I-O-N, W-O-T-C-C. Or you can give by Giveify, which is New Dimension Way of the Cross Church. Amen. And of course, you can give by cash on tonight to be a blessing to, amen, our missionary department. Amen. Which is headed by our, amen, missionary Sylvia Snell. Amen. We thank God for her taking on such a great task. And our vice president, amen, Sister Tammy Harris. Amen. And the secretary and, and the rest of those, the rest of the cabinets, huh? we're grateful. Let us bless this offering and we're going to be dismissed. As Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you. We thank you, God, for everything that you have done. Thank you for everything you have said, God. Thank you, God, for this house of worship. Thank you for the people, God, who have uh, chimed in on YouTube and Facebook and any other social platform. Father, say thank you god those that have given on tonight god via cash app or cash father we thank you god we pray god indeed god ah oh, god that you would bless them indeed some 30 some 60 and some 104 and it's in the precious name of the lord jesus christ that we say amen 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 listen also um tomorrow night at 8 p.m and friday at 8 p.m we our own Zoom for prayer. Amen. It's a, a diocese prayer. Our bishop, a diocesan, Bishop Terry Hicks is requesting all. Amen. We've been on prayer. We've been in prayer all week long. Amen. At 8 p.m. Starting this past Monday. Amen. So we'll continue that on tomorrow night. Amen. Just go right to the Zoom. Um, Dimensions of Light Zoom page but to all the Dimensions of Light. Amen. We are hosting the Zoom. 
So just go to the Zoom at 8 o'clock tomorrow night and also Friday night at 8 p.m. All right? God bless you and Saturday night live at 11. Amen. Yes.